Hello, I'm Jim Anderson, music director for the Salvation Army Texas Division. Today we're at our music conservatory at beautiful Camp Hoblitzell in Midlothian, Texas. You know, getting together a brass band is one of the most rewarding activities you can do to strengthen your core. Music is one of the things that sets the Salvationist apart, and having a band not only enhances our worship, but also helps us to understand and experience for ourselves our unique Salvation Army heritage. Participating in a band encourages teamwork and fosters discipline and commitment to the core. Individually, many band members develop a higher self-esteem from the positive experience of mastering an instrument and being an important part of a core worship experience. The purpose of this videotape is to help you, perhaps with limited musical training, to increase your knowledge and to give you some helpful pointers to putting together a beginner band that with time will be a source of pride to your core and to your community. The first programme will be about the needs of the individual. The second will consider the ensemble. And the third programme will cover additional aspects of band training you need to know. So let's get started. First, let's start with the basics. Instruments do not necessarily need to be new and expensive, only in good operating condition, with working slides and valves. Check to see that there are no water or air leaks and that the mouthpiece is not damaged. Dents can restrict airflow and cause tuning problems. The beginning music book, which is recommended at this time by the Salvation Army USA Southern Territory Music Committee, is best in class. This book may be purchased from our trade department or from your local music store. It is important to have the proper environment for beginning a band programme. This includes a room with plenty of space, adequate lighting, chairs and music stands. Ideally, tuition should be given on a one-to-one -one basis. However, if this is not possible, the next best option would be to separate the B-flat and the E-flat instruments. Let's focus now on the individual musicians who will make up your beginner band. When deciding what instrument is best suited to your musicians, consider these principles. Your band instrumentation needs an SATB, soprano, alto, tenor, and bass four-part harmony ensemble. The soprano part is normally played by the cornet, the alto part by the second cornet at first horn, the tenor part by the second horn, baritone and trombone, the bass part by the euphonium and tuba. Look at teeth formation and jaw structure. Look at the thickness or thinness of the lips. Often, thin lips are more suited to cornets and alto horns. Thick lips are often more suited to low brass. Another consideration in selecting a child for low brass is the physical ability of the child to lift and hold the instrument. The most desirable instrumentation would be a few cornets, horns, a baritone, euphonium, at least one bass player, and percussion. If you have too many cornetists, don't worry. Since all brass instrument fingering is the same, with the exception of the trombone, you can transfer players to lower brass very easily. 
sometimes you'll start a student on a particular instrument simply because they express an interest, although your judgment and experience may suggest an alternative choice would be more appropriate. Once you have musicians seated and ready to play, preferably in separate E-flat and B-flat learning groups, it is important to instruct your beginners on the fundamentals of proper training techniques. The first step towards producing a good tone is correct posture. Establish this consistently at the beginning to develop proper breathing habits, breath control and good playing position. There are two schools of thought regarding posture. It is best for you to choose one way and stick with it. In the first one, bandsmen should sit on the front edge of the chair with weight distributed forward. Feet should be slightly apart and flat on the floor. Short people often prefer this style so that they are able to fully touch the floor. The alternative is for the bandsmen to sit all the way back to the rear of the chair with their back flush with the back of the chair. Again, feet flat on the floor, slightly apart. Shoulders should not be slumped forward or raised due to body tension, but should be held in a relaxed, upright position as demonstrated here. The head should not be tilted to either side or with the chin too far in or jutting out. When preparing to play, keep in mind that the instrument should be raised to the embouchure, not the head lowered toward the instrument. Often, beginner baritone or euphonium players tend to wrap their bodies around the instrument in an awkward position, which restricts airflow and creates unnecessary tension. Correct breathing is also important. Take a full, deep breath with an expanded rib cage. Be careful that your students don't raise their shoulders. Breathe through the corners of your mouth and aim for a clear, open sound, which is produced by directing a column of air straight into the instrument. The instrumentalist must learn to firstly Inhale a large volume of air. Secondly, quickly and silently inhale through the mouth as you would if you were to suddenly step outside into a nice cold morning. Just like this. <sighs> Lastly, control the speed and duration of the exhalation. The first thing we'll do is pay attention to embouchure. Have your bandsmen bring their lips together by pronouncing the syllable M. The upper and lower teeth should be slightly apart and approximately aligned. Firm the corners of the mouth and form a slight pucker. Without the mouthpiece, blow a steady stream of air between the lips to make a long buzzing sound. Another method of forming the embouchure is to shape the lips as if for whistling, then pull back the corners of the mouth as if smiling while at the same time retaining the whistling shape. As you attempt to blow air through your lips, a buzzing sound should occur. A word of caution, do not allow the air to puff out your lips or cheeks. Once the bandsmen are proficient at this, you will then be ready to place the mouthpiece on the lips. Have bandmen buzz without the mouthpiece. Then, place the mouthpiece on the middle of the lips. Remember, slight variations resulting from an unusual shape of the lips, formation of the teeth or jaw structure are acceptable. Now, produce the buzzing sound with a steady stream of air. It's easy for some students to understand buzzing if you explain that it is like combining whistling and smiling. Buzzing, even in the early stages, helps to improve tone and should become part of the daily practice routine. For fun, have the band buzz a song together using only mouthpieces. Now, you are ready to put the mouthpiece into the instrument and produce your first tone. A tone is started when a stream of air from the lungs sets the lips vibrating. The tongue acts as a valve which releases the airstream into the mouthpiece. The tongue should be positioned against the upper front teeth where they meet the gums prior to the start of the tone. In the instant that the tone is produced, 
the tongue should quickly release to the lower portion of the mouth cavity. To stop the tone, simply stop breathing. If you stop the air by placing the tongue behind the teeth, an unmusical conclusion to the tone is produced. Still in separate E-flat and B-flat learning groups, introduce simple rhythms by rote in conjunction with the student's first natural tone. Create rhythms using the natural note. You can make your own or use our suggestions. A note to the teacher. At this stage, have students blow quarter, half, and whole notes. This is fundamental material for most hymn tunes your band will play because most hymn tunes are quarter, half, and whole notes. However, it is important to be sensitive to the learning speed of your class. After the large majority of your class has mastered simple rhythms, you are then ready to begin teaching Making Muffins by rote to the separate groups of E-flat and B-flat students. Have students learn the three notes used in that song. After mastering this simple song in the like instrument E-flat and B-flat groups, bring the two groups together and form one group. Make sure both groups understand that the resulting sounds will be different pitches. Refer to the best in class book one, page four, in order to see a visual representation of the notes you have already learned. Now, refer to page eight to see a visual representation of making muffins. Remember that what we are showing you in this videotape represents about six months of work. So don't give up or lose heart. Practice makes perfect. Use this video as many times as you need to. And when you feel ready, move on to the second program where we will consider pulling all these individual musicians into a group. See you there.